If they are not tayyib, if they are evil, they will destroy my life and their lives and the community. One person who is tayyib and lawful and good and responsible is better than 20 who are irresponsible. So pray and keep praying and ask. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when we look at his movement, who did choose? Who chose Ashura for him? God or him himself? Who? Huh? Both. Both. Imam Hussein himself says, When he was about to leave Medina, many people came to him. Some of the wives of the Prophet, such as Um Salama, Abdullah ibn Abbas, many others. Oh, Abba Abdullah, please don't go to Karbala. That is a dangerous area. Please don't take your family. What did he say? He said one sentence. Inna Allah shaa an yarani batila. God, the decree, the will of God is that I get martyred on the plains of Karbala. So God wanted him to go. But did he accept or reject? With his acceptance, with his love, with his conviction. Whatever God decides for us, we don't say no. We follow. We follow with love. Imam Hussein was smiling at the time of his martyrdom. He was not worried about himself. In fact, he was happy. The companions of Imam Hussein on the eve of Ashura were shaking hands with each other, congratulating each other. Some of them, they cracked jokes. So some of them said, why do you crack a joke tonight? He said, because a few hours until the morning when we're going to find our way to paradise. Of course I am happy, I'm excited about this journey. They were not forced to do that out of their free will. So in conjunction with God, coordination with God, both, both God planned and the servant accepted and he was willing to go. This is why, my friends, the power of dua comes. Do not <coughs> underestimate the power of dua. Dua is going to change your life. Dua is going to create miracles. Not far from here, only 30 minutes from here, there is a man that I met him. I don't mention his name. Some of you here know him. I met him over 20 years ago. He hated the Shia Muslims. He hated them. He did not tolerate to see a single Shia. He said, I went to Hajj. I stood before the house of God. It was morning. I prayed to Rakan. And I said, oh God, this is exactly what he said, and he's a truthful. This is a true statement. This man speaks the truth. He doesn't lie. I know him. He said, oh God, if the path that I'm following is correct, keep me strong on this path. If this path that I am following is wrong, please, God, don't allow me to leave this city of Mecca before you change, change my direction. Allah. He says, by Allah, I have not finished my sentence. Someone tapped on my shoulder from behind. He said, I got angry. I said, leave me alone. I'm praying. He said, no, I have a question. I have a question. Where are you from? He said, I'm from Egypt. What do you want from me? Where are you from? The guy told me I'm from Iran. So he says, I said to him, oh, you are Iranian, you are Shia, you hit yourself in Ashura, you have a, another Quran, you, 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 you curse a Sahaba, you do this, you do this. The man said, listen, 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 I'm not a scholar, I'm an engineer. My job is an engineer and I came for Hajj. So if you want answers, we have a scholars here. I can take you to my scholars. He said, yeah, okay. Let me go to your scholars. He said, I was angry at him, prostrated. He said, we left Masjid al-Haram. He took me to a building. 
he took me to the elevator. There is a room. Inside that room, there were several scholars sitting. He said, I went there with arrogance. I, I, want, I went there to defy them, to prove that they are wrong, and I am right. But they welcomed me. They welcomed me with a smile. They welcomed me with a smile. The power of a smile. This is what I spoke about. You can turn an enemy instantly into a friend. God has given you this power, this ability. Use it. Use it with your family. Use it with your friends, with your neighbors. Use it with your enemies too. So they welcomed me with open arms. They said, how can we help you? So I had a barrage of questions. You know all these misconceptions about Shia Muslims. Why do you believe Muhammad is the prophet? Why, why do you believe Muhammad is not the prophet? Ali is the prophet. Where is your true Quran? Give me your true Quran. Why do you curse the Sahaba? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? He said, okay, sit down, sit down, relax. Have a cup of tea. He says, the meeting started in the morning. We only stopped for prayers. They invited me for lunch and dinner. I refused to eat. Only for the prayers. We pray, we go back to the debate. From morning till midnight. Till midnight. He said that day I did not eat anything. I was asking them. They were answering me. They were showing me the books. Look at this. Look at the answer in your books. He said by midnight. I realized that God had answered my prayers. SubhanAllah. But he said, I was so arrogant, I did not tell them that I concede the defeat. I didn't tell them. I told them, listen, the books that you have, give them to me. Give me these books. I'll take them to my apartment. Maybe God is going to make out of that an abundance of goodness. They said, no, these books are precious. We cannot give you these books. I insisted. They said, oh, okay, three days. You take these books, three days and you bring them back. He said, I took the books to my apartment. I didn't go to Masjid al-Haram anymore. I left the tawaf, the ziyara. I stayed in my apartment reading these books. After three days, I brought the books back to them. And I felt that the change took place. And from that day, I started saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, wa ashhadu anna aliyya al-waliyullah. The man is only 30 minutes from here. One of the most successful preachers, scholars of the school of Ahlul Bayt. This happened when he was 40 years old. 40 years old. And I have many stories like that. And amongst you now, there are people who are sitting here, they have similar stories. 